Men may be the first in most new fields, but it's not long before women are there too. And today this is particularly true of Britain's armed forces. All over the world, on land, on the sea, and in the air, women are proving that this isn't just a man's world after all. In Oxfordshire, girls of the RAF Transport Command's parachute packing unit, which packs 600 parachutes a day, now get a chance to find out for themselves what it's like to jump with a parachute. The gondola, attached to a tether balloon, takes them up to 800 feet. And then, after taking a deep breath, these packers of the Women's Royal Air Force find out at first hand. The landing might be a bit of a jolt, but their preliminary training has taught them how to take care of that. Men of the RAF have had facilities for sub-aqua diving for many years. But now, 11 RAFs have taken up the sport. After six months training in England, the RAFs were flown to Malta for a two-week diving expedition. The girls, whose average age is 21, had been training with the RAF Benson Diving Club and took their own equipment to Malta. With them went five RAF men from Benson to continue the girls' training from Oxfordshire gravel pits to the clear waters of the Mediterranean. With their equipment on and checked, the expedition leader, Sergeant Brian Bertola from Manchester, gives the girls some last minute advice. And then it's, let's get in. While two of the girls man the rescue dinghy, the others find out what the Mediterranean looks like beneath the surface. A new and fascinating world whether at first seen by peering down from the surface or by joining the shoals of fish, 20 to 40 feet down. On another day of the expedition, the RAF laid on a launch to take the girls to less accessible parts of the coast of Malta. Four of these rats work in the safety equipment departments of RAF stations, so this training should give them a better understanding and greater interest in their work. For all of them, it's an experience they'll remember. Twenty-year-old transport driver Judy Doyle from Sussex went down into this bay to find a crashed RAF plane on the seabed. Some of the girls swam down to depths of 60 feet for the first time. Others just got in plenty of practice diving in clear water. While others explored the colourful marine life to bring back shells and exotic seaweeds. Not only did the sea around the coast of Malta fascinate these 11 girls, but for many of them, the life of the island itself was a new and intriguing experience. Women jumping by parachute, diving under the sea, and on land, surviving in the jungle. The first rats to go on a three-day jungle survival course set off into the Malayan jungle recently. 
Why? Because they wanted to. Because they wanted to experience what's been part of RAF aircrew training for the last 25 years. The 18 rats, leaving their comfortable quarters in Singapore, trek through the jungle by day and set up camp at night. Each raft carried her own survival kit, food, a change of clothing, a hammock and bedding. With camp made for the night, groups of girls pooled their food. Some got on with the cooking, while others did the washing. For in the steaming heat of the jungle, clothes need changing at least twice a day. Talk about mad dogs and English men out in the midday sun. These English girls seem to take to jungle life naturally enough. The weird noises at night, the insects, the snakes, rumors of elephants nearby, and sleeping in a hammock slung between two trees. Nothing to it. Three instructors from the RAF's Jungle Survival School in Singapore led the raft party. Proper use of the machete for hacking through dense undergrowth is essential to move in the jungle. And so is the proper use of the compass. Small groups of girls were taken out on survival treks for food and water. For the jungle will supply both, if you know where to look for them. Some tempting looking fruits are deadly poisonous, while other ordinary looking plants and roots can make good food. Lengths of vine and bamboo contain fresh rainwater. So too does the peculiar cup-shaped flower of the pitcher plant. But often the water from the pitcher plant is full of insects so it must be strained and cleaned before drinking. And then, of course, there are leeches that cling to the flesh and suck blood. You have to learn to live with them to survive here. Of these 18 girls who volunteered to go into the jungle for three days, nine said when they returned that they would never willingly go again. The other nine said they wouldn't mind going again. Not one said she wanted to go again. But then how many men go back into the jungle just for the fun of it? It all goes to prove that there are few if any jobs today which women can't tackle just as well as the men. And when the job's done and it's time to relax, who does the work then? Well, of course, a man.